one of the other big reasons I like um, dairy out, and there's so many of these we're going to go through, but dairy is so for most kids with an autism diagnosis or some sort of speech delay or speech difference, neurodevelopmental cognitive delay, they will have something called cerebral folate deficiency, which means that folate can't get into the brain. And so at the moment, there's this big thing with uh, Trump and RFK where they're talking about, oh, most, and that's documented again, where they know that this is a condition that a lot of these kids have. So they're sending parents to get the FRAP test, which is a folate receptor antibody test to test for these antibodies. But what nobody's saying about this, because they're saying, oh, if they have this situation, if they have this condition, then just put loads of folate and flood the brain with folate. Actually, that's really unhelpful. And honestly, like just from an anecdotal perspective, like seeing this in practice, those folate receptors are blocked by so what's happening is the immune system is attacking those receptors, right? So we know the immune system's confused. So obviously zonulin being activated, more of this immune activity going on is unhelpful from that perspective. So gluten is really unhelpful, but also dairy blocks those folate receptors. So if you flood the system with folate and the child's eating loads of dairy, it's going to be very futile. The other thing that's going to happen is, is that folate is going to build up in other areas and cause lots of oxidative stress and neurotoxicity. So it's almost backwards. And I get the premise of it. Okay, there's a blockage in folate. So let's flood it with folate so it gets into the brain and folinic acid can pass through the blood brain barrier. But if you still have this blockage and you've got dairy in, it's almost like, why would you go through all that invasive stuff when if you just take dairy out, it could be really helpful. And actually, we know that some of these infections can also block folate receptors. So it's like, let's like treat the root cause stuff, you know, and just by merely changing a few foods, like we could have these profound results rather than having to go into these heavy duty invasive things that could actually cause harm and not be not even be necessary. So that's another reason why I like dairy out. Um, glut uh, gluten and dairy are really high glutamate foods. Glutamates are always high in our kids. It's a really excitatory neurotransmitter that's meant to be like in a seesaw balance with something called GABA, which is inhibitory and calming. And most of our kids have too much glutamate. So any food that's processed or is heavy gluten and dairy based is really high in glut like glutamic acid, which is really excitatory for our kids. So it's another reason why I like those proteins removed to kind of help the child to feel calm and regulated. The other thing that this is really one of the most uh, well sort of documented reasons why autistic children specifically do really well on a gluten free diet. There's loads of science published around this is that um, gluten and dairy break down into specific like um, peptides in the body um, and they leak through the blood brain barrier and they fit into opiate receptors in the brain. So. And that's why they're really addictive as well. And that's why it's so difficult to stop our kids eating them. And actually, even for some adults where they're like, cheese, like bread, <laughs> it's, like, it's like their favorite food because they're so addictive. And so those peptides are like, they're working like opioids in our kids' brains and they're fitting into these receptors. So they almost cause like a drug defect. And this is something I see hugely. I know, Lara, you're the same, is like, we take those proteins out and it's almost like, and the, the parents report to me, they say, oh my goodness, it's like they woke up a bit. It's feel, they, they feel like more with us. They're like more in our world. They're kind of, and we're not trying to drag these kids kicking and screaming into our world. I think there's like, I love that like they have their own kind of dynamics and like, I love like, I love our kids, you know, and they're kind of like the specialness that they bring to this world. I think there is like almost like this, terrestrial <laughs> like thing about our kids where they're, they're, they're sending us messages and helping us to kind of see things in a different way and I think that's lovely and I love all of that but actually like wouldn't it be nice for our kids to be able to access what they wanted and not be sort of so stuck in a sort of inflamed foggy mm -hmm. drunk kind of brain that they can't actually if they want to access stuff, they don't have the opportunity to because they can't, you know, because they're being drugged essentially by the food they eat every day. Um, so that's another re that's like the most well documented reason why gluten and um, dairy free diets are so helpful for kids with autism. But then there's some other reasons as well. So if you think about um, like gluten and dairy, they're like, well, especially dairy, it's like a mucus forming food, right? Mm. So if you think about mucus in your body, so one, it's going to be more stimulating for the immune system because the immune system has to work harder to clear more mucus from your body. The other thing, if you've got excess mucus in your gut, think about like your gut lining. 
if you've got like a heavy, thick mucus layer that's constantly being produced, it's going to block absorption of other things. So instead of like your, you know, when you eat something, your body and your the gut lining naturally being able to absorb like the things that you want it to, it's got this thick mucus layer that's kind of there like a sludge on top of it. And then you're not absorbing the, the the minerals and vitamins and things like that that you that you need to um the other thing that if we think about from an immune system perspective is um dairy will trigger histamine release um and histamine is always high in our kids like especially autistic kids it's part of their picture it's part of their profile so if you have a child with autism typically they are very undermethylated again it's part of the the it's part of why they're autistic and um, histamine and methylation have an inverse relationship. So your, your methylation cycle breaks down histamine. So if you've already got too much histamine in your body and then you eat a load of food that makes that, I mean, for, from my perspective, most of the kids who are really high histamine, like, and they're eating a lot of high histamine foods, are the angry children. They're like oppositional children. They're, and and there's, there's actually, there was a, a study done on mice. I know it's not humans. Um, but they did a thing where they increased the histamine in these mice and then they like became really aggressive and started like scrap. And that sounds silly, but like that visual for me is always there when I think about the kids, you know, like the higher the histamine, I find it's almost like they're, you know, like one of those scales where you see like, and then the steam coming out of the person's ears in like a cartoon. <laughs> I'm like visual, aren't I, my brain. And that's kind of like, that's how Rose was as well. Like the more histamine that was in her body. And we saw that whenever she ate histamine foods, mm. um, she became more elevated, more oppositional, more, more angry. And so um, dairy will trigger more of that. And of course, that's again, from an, uh, an immune system perspective, uh, uh, perspective even, <laughs> um, it's like just your immune system and mast cell activation as well. So if your mast cells are constantly being activated, it's just another immune dysregulation which again leads to this kind of like really unhelpful cross reactivity when we're going into these kind of pans pandas sort of flare mm -hmm. situations. So um, those are some of the main reasons why we take, I mean, that's enough, but there's, there are probably more that we could even talk about. But the other thing that I find with gluten and dairy is that if you really think about, because I think a lot of parents and I really want to hone in on this, when you talk about removing those foods, I think a lot of parents panic because they think, oh my goodness, we're removing two healthy food groups. Because in the pyramid of like nutrition in like the NHS, we're told that like, I think the bottom half is like all pasta, cereal, breads and all of that. So yeah. we're like, that you know, and we then it, shouldn't eat. Yeah. And then it's like the next layer is like the dairy, I think, I can't remember. And it's like, so I think parents panic thinking, oh my goodness, we're taking out. But if you're really honest with yourself, and this is what I sort of got my mindset into when I was going through it, really think about the gluten and dairy that your child eats. If we're really honest with ourselves, <laughs> pizza, pasta, cakes, cereals, bread. I'm just trying to think of what else is going to like croissants. You know, just all of the crap food that we just don't need in our diet, mm. you know. And then if you think about dairy, it's like cheese, milk, butter. I mean, they're probably the best of the bunch. I mean, you know. <laughs> and then you've got custard. You've got ice cream. You've got, like, all of the sauces that are made up. And then you've got the thickeners from gluten. And it's like, if you think about really what you're removing, you're actually just removing a lot of junk food. And I think when you actually take gluten and dairy out, it really helps you to actually focus and so many parents give me this feedback they're like oh my goodness without gluten and dairy it's really helped me to focus on meat and vegetables and actually whole foods because mm. you know when you've got those to fall back on you do don't yeah, you like oh fast. here's it's a cracker yeah. yeah yeah and so I think like take and that's the other thing to know is that so of course like I have children of all sort of dynamics that come into practice as uh, you do and well we collectively do and, um, you know, you will get parents who have been on the journey for like five years and they know every dietary intervention. But even those parents, they're like, I've done everything. I'm like, have you, though? 